What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, we want to talk about Big Blue's win over the Cleveland Browns on Sunday, 21-15, improving to 1-2 and two on the season. want to dive into this game a little bit and recap it, talk about the good, the bad, and where the Giants can go to from here. And I think the most important note to start off this video is avoiding the 0-3 start. You know, the season would have likely gone in the dumps if the Giants had lost this game. And, you know, there's a lot of promise moving forward. We'll see what Big Blue can take from it. But before I get into specifics, folks, if you're new, make sure to check us out on all of our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of your support. So, um, did not start off good. Eric Gray fumbles the opening kickoff. And then the Browns strike on their first offensive play, you know, 24-yard touchdown to Amari Cooper. I wasn't too sure if he was in bounds, and, you know, it was just an awful start. You couldn't get worse than that. Um, but from then on, the Giants really dominated this game, guys. Um, they dominated the line of scrimmage. They sacked the Sean Watson eight times in this game. I mean, he was looking confused back there the whole game. Uh, the Giants were blitzing a little bit, you know, a lot of McFadden, a lot of Pinnock, uh, most sacks by this Giants team in a decade. And I think the Giants were able to apply so much pressure because they were able to stop the run. Um, Shane Bowen's defense, which emphasizes stopping the run, didn't do that the first two weeks, leading to two losses. And this week they did. They only allowed 69 rushing yards. They were able to get the Browns in second and long, third and long, and that's where the Giants were able to, you know, do really well. You know, the Browns had two turnovers and only 217 total yards of offense. And Dexter Lawrence had two of the eight sacks, along with four quarterback hits. Pinnock had a sack as well. Uh, Aziz Ojolari got in the mix with a sack and two QB hits. Elijah Chapman, the undrafted rookie out of SMU, had his first NFL sack. And I was very impressed with the linebacker play as usual. Bobby Okereke flying all over the field. Uh, Micah McFadden played through a back injury, had three quarterback hits and half a sack. Thibodeau got half a sack with two QB hits. Even Rakim Nunez Rochez got in the mix as well. Five tackles, a QB hit, half a sack. And then Isaiah Simmons also saw a lot of time. Um, you know, after Okereke and McFadden, it's really just Moose out. Um, so the Giants really only use four linebackers on defense, those being the four. So overall, I thought the defense was good. There was a couple of signs of concern. You know, a lot of the corners were getting hurt. Drew Phillips and Adoree Jackson both left the game with calf injuries. I believe Phillips left in the first quarter and then Adoree in the second half. Giants were already without Nick McLeod, so they had to insert Art Green for a few snaps, a guy they had just called up from the practice squad. So that's definitely concerning, but... The offense also picked up some steam this week, and it all starts with Daniel Jones. Um, having two good back-to-back -back performances, I was very pleased with his play. Sacked just twice. Good job by the offensive line. His completion percentage, very high in the first half. It took a little toll in the second half, but still an overall solid performance. 24-34 for 236 yards and two touchdown passes. Had a 109.4 passer rating, and again, Giants offense able to move the football. Uh, I believe Devin Singletary had 65 rushing yards, 43 receiving yards, so a 108-yard day for him with a touchdown on the ground. He did lose a fumble. I want to see him share up the football a little bit more, but um, I thought Jones handled the pressure well. When it came, you know, Browns have no slouch of a defense with Miles Garrett, familiar foes and Dallin Tomlinson, et cetera. Um, Zadarius Smith as well, and I thought Tyrone Tracy really impressed the uh, fifth-round rookie that the Giants drafted out of Purdue. Um, I was excited to see him be a nice, solid pass-catching back option, um, position that the Giants haven't had quite some time. Um, Tracy was solid, two catches for 17 yards, five rushes for 23 yards as well. Um, I've liked what I've seen from him. So far through these first three games, more than I liked of Eric Gray all of last season. Um, Malik Neighbors continues to blossom. Look, we already know he's great. The question now, is he elite? And he's starting to show it. Um, 12 targets, had eight catches for 78 yards and two touchdowns. He became the first player 
in NFL history with 20 plus receptions and three touchdowns in his first three career games. His 23 catches this season are also tied second most by a player through their first three career games. Um, and I think what helps Malik Neighbors too is, you know, Wondell Robinson alleviates a lot of pressure off him. He's a high volume guy in the slot. He had seven catches and, you know, neighbors really had to step up. Uh, Slayton left with a thumb injury. Jalen Hyatt was only used once the entire game, and I believe it was one of the first throws of the game. They went deep and severely overthrew him. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was interesting all across the board. Malik Neighbors looks phenomenal. Uh, special teams wasn't exactly great. Uh, Greg Joseph missed the 48-yard field goal. He did make all three PATs. Amir Smith Marset had two punt returns, 19 total yards. So, yeah, not the uh, usual suspects. You know, I'm intrigued to see how Graham Gano and Gunnar Olszewski um, heal. Hopefully, you know, they're not going to play Thursday against Dallas, obviously, very short week. Gunnar is going to be out for another couple weeks at least, and then Gano is probably going to miss the next three minimum since he's on IR. Um, and Olszewski as well. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see when their windows do reopen. Um, but, yeah, overall, Giants 1-2 and two going into a short week, going up against the Dallas Cowboys team that's lost two straight games. They're all sorts of dysfunctional right now. So it'll be interesting to see if Big Blue can make this a game. Find out Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube on Big Blue Avenue. Sam Cardona and I will be there with our guest, Brian Tard from the Sports Box. Um, South Jersey Cowboys fan, excited to talk to him and get his perspective from the Dallas side of that game. So the Giants are 1-2 and two on the season. Friendly neighborhood reminder, if you liked what you watched, make sure to subscribe to us on all our social media platforms below, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Big Blue Avenue. Remember to smash that like button, ring the bell for notifications, subscribe. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Without further ado, folks, let's go Big Blue.